Hi, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for March 14th, 2012. On this week's show, two photon lithography prints in fine detail. There's an exciting development for the Atterbium optical clock. Lasers replace chemicals to control weeds. A sweet spot in solar cells is found, and we bring you new figures on the 2011 machine vision market. By speeding two-photon lithography by an order of magnitude over similar devices, researchers at the Vienna University of Technology have opened the 3D printing technique to new areas of application, such as medicine. The printer uses a liquid resin hardened by a focused laser beam. The focal point of the beam is guided through the resin by movable mirrors and leaves behind a line of solid polymer just a few hundred nanometers wide. This fine resolution enables the creation of intricately structured sculptures as tiny as a grain of sand with a speed of 5 meters per second, a new record. Progress was made by improving the steering mechanism of the mirrors, tuning the acceleration and deceleration periods in the mirrors very precisely, and creating a resin containing molecules that turn it solid when activated by laser light. The scientists are now developing biocompatible resins for medical applications. The 3D printer could also be used to create tailor-made construction parts for biomedicine or nanotechnology. Because light waves vibrate faster than microwaves, optical clocks can be more precise than the cesium atomic clocks which presently determine time. A new pendulum for the ytterbium clock was created by a transition that can only be excited with difficulty in the ytterbium ion. It increases the clock's accuracy to 17 digits after the decimal point, which is the equivalent of losing only about 30 seconds over the age of the entire universe. In addition to exciting a quantum mechanically strongly forbidden transition of this ion, the scientists also measured it with extreme accuracy. In quantum mechanics, forbidden means that the jump between the two energy states of atoms is almost impossible due to the conservation of symmetry and angular momentum. The excited state can then be very persistent. Due to this long lifetime, an extremely narrow resonance, whose line width only depends on the quality of the laser used, can be observed during the laser excitation of this state. A narrow resonance line is an important prerequisite for an exact optical clock. New research shows that alternating excitation of the ion with two different laser intensities allows the unperturbed resonance frequency to be determined with high accuracy. This is a decisive advantage for the further development of this atomic clock. Lasers can be used to selectively fight young weeds, report researchers in Hanover, Germany. Lasers are seen as an environmentally safe alternative to chemical pesticides. By using an exact selective beam in a wavelength of 10.6 microns from a CO2 laser, wheat growth can be impaired by destroying the plant's sensitive growth centers. A stereo camera system is used to recognize the plants and optimize the position of the beam. Current lab results show that a minimum dose of around 35 joules is necessary to kill seedlings, and this laser energy can be exactly and effectively adapted to the plant species and growth stage. Measurements made by a team from the National Institute of Standards and Technology and the U.S. Naval Research Lab have determined the best thickness for organic solar cell layers, a finding that could help optimize their performance. Prototype solar cells made of organic materials currently lag far behind conventional silicon-based photovoltaic cells in terms of electricity output. But if even reasonably efficient organic cells can be developed, they would cost far less to produce than conventional cells, could cover larger areas, and could conceivably be recycled far more easily. Finding their sweet spot involved exploring the relationship between layer thickness and two different aspects of the material. When light strikes the film, the layers generate an initial spike in current that then decays fairly quickly. The ideal cell would generate electrons as steadily as possible. Changing the layer thickness affects the initial decay rate, but it also affects the overall capacity of the material to carry electrons, so the team wanted to find the optimum combination of these two factors. Sales of machine vision components and systems in North America climbed 5% in 2011 to nearly $1.9 billion, according to new figures released by industry trade group the Automated Imaging Association. Both manufacturing and non-manufacturing sectors are expected to grow as vision becomes more critical to a growing number of industries, the group said. Paul Kellett, AIA's Director of Market Analysis, noted that sales of machine vision components, including smart cameras, grew 13%. Application-specific systems, however, grew just 2 percent. He also pointed out that the first half of the year was much stronger than the second half as overall economic growth began to slow down. That's it for this edition of Light Matters. We'd like to hear from you. Tell us what you like or don't like about our program. We welcome your comments and suggestions at lightmatters.photonics.com. You'll find links to share and subscribe to Light Matters by clicking the Share with Friends button on our video player. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time for another edition of the Photonics Industry's only weekly newscast. Basically, I use light to 
differentiate the cancer and normal tissue for the lumpectomy breast cancer. And this is a very, I think this technique can impact the patient care for the breast cancer. <laughs> Thank you.